الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعه إلى يوم الدين وبعد قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور صدق الله صدق الله العظيم حمدا ومصليا ومتوكلا على الله وبعد Respected brothers Elders and sisters in Islam, once again we thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us, granting us, allotting us, providing us this opportunity today and this blessed and sacred day of Jumu'ah to come to perform our Salatul Jumu'ah. I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming. And may Allah reward us graciously both in dunya and in akhirah. We all are aware that in the English alphabet there are 26 letters. 26 letters. Of the 26 letters, there are three letters that are very important. They are of great significance. And these three letters are consecutive. What are these letters? The letter B, the letter C, and the letter D. B, C, and D. What these letters signifies what are their meanings given? B signifies birth. Birth. We all came in this world through birth. We were born. Allahu akhrajakum min butoni ummahatikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us forth into this world through the medium of birth. Every human, every animal came through birth. D signifies and means death. Death. We all would leave this world through death. There is no other way of leaving this dunya, this plane of existence, other than the medium of death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu nafsin maut. Everyone will die, will face this reality, this certainty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Hadith Qudsi, 
إِنِّي كَتَبْتُ الْمَوْتَ عَلَى مَنْ تَحْتَ أَرْشِي I have decreed death on everything beneath my sublime throne. Everything beneath the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will perish. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ So our coming into this world was through birth, B. Our leaving from this world is through death, D. There was no choice in our coming. We did not choose to come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us. And there is no choice in us leaving. There is no choice in us dying. It's a reality, it's a must. There is no choice. We have no choice in this. We had no choice where we would have been born or created. Allah brought us into this world. And C means what? C means choices. B is for birth. D is for death. We had no choice in coming. We have no choice in going. But C means choices. Between B and D are all the choices. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have given you choices between your birth and your death. All has been given to us. Free will. The only creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given free will is this insan and this human being. إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرُ Choices are being given to us. No choices are being given to the malaika and the angels. They are also the creation of Allah. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. They only do what they are commanded to do. No other creation around us we see have a choice. The sun does not have a choice. It rises in the morning. It sets in the evening. The trees around us have no choice. Whatever pattern Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them on, that's what they carry out. <coughs> that's what they carry out. So every other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has created have no choice except this human being, this insan. Allah has given us free choices. And we make those choices in life. And whatever choices we make, while living in this world from birth to death, our ending, our death will be determined by the choices that we make while we are alive. كَمَا تُحْيُونَ تَمُوتُونَ The Nabi of Allah وسلم, says, The way and the manner you choose to live your life, whether in the obedience of Allah or in the disobedience of Allah, whatever choices you make, tamutun, you will die with those choices. You will die according to those choices. And likewise, you will be resurrected. We have the choice to be good. We have the choice to be bad. We have the choice to say something good and we have the choice to say bad things. We have the choice to marry someone good and we have the choice to marry someone bad. All the choices are there for us. We have the choice to go to Jannah and we have the choice to go to Jahannam. All the choices are there for us. We have to choose. <coughs> and we must understand one thing whatever is forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
would remain forbidden even if everyone is doing it. Whatever Allah has made forbidden, it will be forbidden. Whatever is forbidden in the Quran that Allah told us it is forbidden, it will remain forbidden till Qiyamah. It doesn't matter if everyone is doing what is forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will still remain forbidden. And whatever is allowed by Allah, it would remain allowed even though one person is doing it. Even though one person is doing it, it is allowed, it is permissible by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the process of making choices while we are alive, between the 60 or 70 years that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we must make choices that are pleasing to Allah and that are not displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes the choices that we make, that in the process of fulfilling those choices, we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We disobey Allah in the process of doing them. So we don't disobey Allah to obey the creation of Allah. We obey Allah, let the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be disobeyed. But let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be obeyed. And as I've said, we have choices to say the good things. We have choices to say the bad things. It is upon us. Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentions that whomsoever shames his brother or his sister for a sin, for a wrong, that he or she may have done or have committed, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with that same very wrong, with that same very sin before you leave this world. If you expose someone, if you shame someone, you've seen someone doing a wrong, and you made it public, you go viral with it, you expose that individual, what did he say? In doing that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with that same wrong and with that same sin before you leave this world. So let us not sit around and watch and look for people's faults and mistakes and do not expose them. Instead, what we do, we work on ourselves and fix ourselves first. Work in ourselves. Let us fix ourselves first because we need to understand that it will be me alone standing before Allah on the day of Qiyamah to give an account. I would not be responsible for another person. I would be responsible for myself. So let us not look down upon people because we don't know what difficulties people go through in life with regards to themselves, with regards to their families, with regards to their children. People go through many, many difficulties and we see otherwise and we start speaking ill of them. We start looking down upon them. Don't we know, I mean, we all have been reading the Quran don't we know, didn't we read that the son of Nuh alayhi salam, a Nabi of Allah, will be in Jahannam, died without Iman? Don't we know that the father of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abu al-Anbiya, the father of all the prophets, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, his father, died without iman without faith don't we know that the wife of sayyidina lut alayhi salam died without iman so let's stop assuming destinies for people stop assuming destinies for people and stop translating intentions instead let us focus on ourselves 
and those whom we are responsible for. Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun ar-ra'iyyati. We are answerable to Allah for ourselves and we are answerable to Allah for those under our care. Today, we might be righteous or we might look pious, but tomorrow, we don't know how our end may be. Our end may end up bad. And remember that the hearts of humans are between the fingers of Allah. This is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The hearts of humans are between the fingers of Allah. They turn like the turning of boiling water. So always make sure that we ask ourselves going forward. Allah made me successful in life. Who gave me this success? Allah guided me. Let me ask myself, who did it for me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me so many bounties and blessings in this life. Who did it for me? Let us direct that towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if perhaps we see something in someone that we dislike, we see some, something, someone said something, we see a behavior or an attitude in someone that we dislike, what should we do? We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say, Oh Allah, I thank you for saving me from what you have inflicted them with. Make dua to Allah. Oh Allah, I thank you for protecting me and saving me from what you have inflicted them and, and put them through. As I've said, look at people differently. Everyone is not on the same pedestal. Everyone is not on the same level. The great Imam, Imam al-Fuqaha, the giant Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, he had a neighbor who was an alcoholic. And of course, his neighbor was a Muslim. An alcoholic neighbor who was a Muslim. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi would always find an opportunity to politely speak to his neighbor. Talk to him to refrain from this wrong, this ism, this sin that he has been committing. And he continuously would do this. Try and try and try and try until he could not do it anymore. After spending many times, many opportunities, he decided to stop advising this person. It happened that one day, the wife of this person came knocking at the door of Sayyid Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi opened the door and he saw the sister crying, weeping profusely. So he asked her, what is the matter? Why are you weeping? And she said, my husband has just passed away. My husband has just passed away and it is my request that you lead his janazah. You perform his janazah. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi knew the condition this man was in because he continuously advising him, he knew. So he thought that maybe this man died in the state of alcohol. So Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi refused to perform the janazah of this man. He refused to perform the janazah. After a while, he went to have his afternoon nap. Imam Abu Hanifa, he went to to take his afternoon nap. As he was napping, he saw in a dream, he saw in a vision, in a dream, that this same man that passed away, this man is walking in Jannah. Where is he walking? He's walking in Jannah. And he is saying, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, that Jannah was not in the hands of Imam Abu Hanifa. Jannah was not in the hands of Imam Abu Hanifa. 
Like what Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu had mentioned when he was beaten and he was persecuted in Mecca. What did he say? I thank Allah that Islam and deen was not in the hands of the Quraysh. Or else I would have never become a Muslim. I would, I would have never been a Muslim. So when Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi he heard this, he woke up in a shock because he knew the lifestyle of this individual. He woke up in a shock and he went straight to the home of this man. And he asked his wife, can you tell me how was your husband before he passed away? What was he doing? And she said, everything was exactly the same as you knew him. Nothing changed. He was exactly the same person, except one thing. Except one thing. What was that one thing that every Jum'ah, on the day of Jum'ah, he would feed the orphans. What he would do? He would feed the orphans. And we know the Prophet says, whoever is compassionate towards the orphans, whoever takes care of an orphan, he will be with me like this in Jannah, which means closeness or one darja lower, one stage lower. So this is what he would do, and he would pass his hands over their heads affectionately, which is also part of the hadith. He would pass his hands over their heads, and he would ask them to make dua for him. He would ask them to make dua for him. So, the wife said, probably, maybe it was one of the du'as of one of these orphan child that rescued my husband. That rescued him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed him into Jannah. Ibn Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi felt so much regret in his heart and he made, he made tawbah. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawbah. So we don't look down at people. We don't know who is close to Allah and who is not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know, right? Because my dear respected brothers and elders, we all live under the cover of Allah. We all live under the satr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah was to remove that satr, if Allah was to remove that cover that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been covering us with for so many years and covering our faults and our mistakes, and not go public with them. Allah has been covering them. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to remove that, then we all would be exposed in the eyes of people. We all would be exposed in the eyes of people. So let us not be proud of our actions. Because again, we don't know who is closer to Allah. What do we do? We advise. And we continuously advise. But we don't expose. We comfort, but we don't hurt. We comfort. Sometimes in, in advising people, because of not knowing the method of advising someone, many of us are very harsh. And we feel that this is part of deen, to be harsh with others. And even in advising them, we, advising, we advise them in a very harsh way. That we remove them from deen. Then bringing them close to deen. Some of our imams also have this attitude and this behavior. In advising people, there is a way and there is a method of doing it. So we advise and in the process, we don't hurt the sentiments and the emotions of someone and let that person uh, go away from deen than coming close. You know, there are two types of people. There are some who are on a spiritual high level and there are others who are at a spiritual low level. Those who are in a spiritual high level, our self-righteousness Makes us, makes us think that we are perfect, that we are superior to others, right? We don't need to change. Others need to change. What, what the self-righteous think? We don't need to change. It's the other people, the other ones. They're the ones who need to change. And we start to go on a haram police rampage, right? That's what we do. And we begin to shift the focus um, from ourselves and focusing on other people and other people right now those who are on a spiritual low level what do they think oh we are already low there is no need for me to go to the masjid there is no need for me to, to pray there is no need for me to fast there is no need for me to do all these things i am already committing sin this is what the spiritual low level people think i'm already there 
right? If I go to the masjid, I will look like a hypocrite, right? And if I, when I go to the masjid, people start judging me differently and they start looking at me differently. So it's better for me to stay with my other company and be with them. No, my dear respected brothers and elders, one drop of repentance from a person who is on a low level of deen will bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know this for a fact. So let us understand we need to advise people in a way that is not harsh. That is not will drive them away from deen. But to bring them closer. To bring them closer. And remember the choices that we make during this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to live in this world from birth to death, from B to D. That is the time we should make use of because our death will be determined according to how we live. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'na wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikru al-Hakim innahu ta'ala jawadun kareem wa malikum barra'u fa rahim fa istaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه قال الله تعالى مخبرا وأمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين أمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وعلى خلفاء الراشدين المهديين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم جماعين وعلى جميع الصحابة والصحابيات رضوان الله تعالى عليهم جماعين وعلى المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع مجيب الدعوات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون والله يعلم ما تسنعون أقيم الصلاة